going on, everybody? Welcome to the Thursday edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down the six-game NBA DFS slate for DraftKings and FanDuel. I don't really know what to say about this slate right now. I mean, apparently Gary Harris mattered a lot. Uh, Chuma Okiki mattered a lot. Um, I have 100% Russ Westbrook, and I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's going to be a good night whatsoever because pretty much everything else went poorly for me. Uh, Rinpak, how's your night going? Yeah, there's a uh, late night hammer that matters a lot in the Utah Jazz side of things, and everyone but Bogdanovich is balling out, it feels like, and they're already up 30 points as we near halftime in that game. So go figure. We'll see who ends up coming out of that game to even matter. Uh, it was a slate that kind of like fit itself uh, going into everything with all the news we had presented it. Now, if you took chances on guys like Nerlens Noel, who put up 49, uh, Jimmy Butler was good. Uh, Tatum was sensational. Vooch was great. But you really needed Gary Harrison, Isaac Okoro to take you there. And I think Aaron Neesmith was great as well, who put up 42 or something like that. What? So, yeah, there was a lot of randos in the shooting guard spot that just paid off. It's a good thing that I was on the PGA Live Before Lock show. It saved me from all the tilt I would have had. Uh, I had no Peyton Pritchard. I had no Neesmith. I had no, uh, was it Tremont Waters was in the starting lineup? What a time to be alive, everybody. Uh, Anywho, if you're like me, if you're not feeling great, you can do yourself a karma favor by getting down to that bottom bar and hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and hitting that notification bell so you know when this and all the other content at Awesome is going live. We are being presented by monkeyknifefight.com today, uh, per usual. Monkeyknifefight.com. If you use the promo code AWESOMO, A-W-E-S-E-M-O, you know how to spell it. It's on the bottom bar as well. Uh, You use that and you get a $100 first match deposit bonus. Uh, Those are some good goodies that you can put towards PGA this weekend, towards uh, NBA, uh, which we are talking, obviously, every single night, every single weeknight, uh, rim packs on multiple shows on the weekends, I'm doing the Sunday shows, you'll be able to figure out what we're looking at for from an NBA perspective and utilize that in the prop market. We also have MLB stuff coming out all the time. I mean, there are so many goodies that you can play uh, prop-based games over at monkeynetfly.com, so uh, get in on the action over there. Uh, rim pack, you ready to get going on this six-gamer, my dude? Let's ride. Let's ride. Steph Curry on the top. Oh, Luka Doncic is up there, 10,800. He apparently, that elbow that got hurt, what, two, three games ago? It's been a little while. I remember watching that live, and uh, I thought he was going to actually be out for a little bit, but uh, he ended up playing through it the last couple. They just got done blitzing Golden State. Uh, but anywho, Luka Doncic uh, up against Detroit, 10,800. You know it's Luka. If he plays, you should probably have a little bit. Steph Curry, 10,300 going up against Minnesota. <laughs> Good luck, Minnesota. Uh, it's also the Warriors team that's going to be without Kelly Oubre tomorrow. Uh, I believe he was given uh, he was doubtful, and so he won't be out there. Steph Curry in a great spot. It's the upside that he has against Minnesota. We all know that. And then Kyrie Irving, 9,600 going up against Indiana. And Brogdon on the other side of that, up to 9K on DK. Wowzer, talk to me about the top end of uh, point guard. Uh, tough not to love Steph Curry in this spot. I think Steph Curry should explode. Coming off a disappointing Warriors game, I think it was one of the worst offensive droughts in NBA history as they were stuck at 12 points for near 10 basketball minutes. Um, talk about people saying Steph Curry being the best shooter, but a drought like that was historically bad. So I expect this Golden State to obviously bounce back and get everything their act together. And what, uh, what uh, no better spot to do it against Minnesota. I think Steph Curry should definitely eat. Obviously, on a slate of this size, he has the potential of being the highest scoring player on the slate. And that reason alone is why you should have some interest in him. And that's uh, something that I've always taken into consideration when taking my shots at tournaments. But if you want to pivot to a guy like Luka Doncic in a matchup versus Detroit, who's going to be playing a pretty much a, a high school varsity team out there tomorrow. So... Uh, you can uh, take your chances on Luca. Luca can put up a massive performance in just three quarters against his Detroit team. And you can really honestly, hopefully there's enough value where we can find a way to get in both uh, both of those guys on both sides. Uh, Curry 10-3, getting that three-point bonus definitely pans out for you and you're saving uh, about uh, $1,400 over there on FanDuel. Curry Irving makes for a great pivot off of those two in a matchup versus Indiana. Can't fault you there. Malcolm Brogdon seems expensive, man. 9K versus Brooklyn. I know it's versus Brooklyn, but I have not seen Malcolm Brogdon that expensive almost ever. 8500 on Kindle. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty expensive for me. Uh, that is buying Malcolm Brogdon when he's the most expensive. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but the matchup, I feel really good about it. So uh, there is uh, it checks half the boxes for me. 
and like that. And uh, shout out to our cover boy, Fred Van Vliet, in a matchup versus Denver. We're, we're seeing what Lonzo's doing right now. He's balling out against his Denver backcourt. Uh, Van Vliet's going to get that shot at Tevin. He's going to be uh, productive, in my opinion, against this Denver team. Point guard, shooting guard eligible on DraftKings. I was trying to figure out what went wrong on the slate while you were talking. Zion Williamson went very, very wrong. I was trying to figure out. There was one guy that had to have absolutely annihilated me. It was definitely Zion Williamson today. But anywho, uh, Lonzo Ball, uh, you said he was on triple-double watch right now, 6,800. Played 38 minutes last game here, and then I don't know what he's at here tonight. Um, But that's definitely a spot to be looking at. So uh, are they seriously playing three games in a row right now? They played on the 26th, 27th, 28th. Is that correct? They're not. They're playing three games in a row. They might be because of they had to reschedule a game. Maybe I'm not sure. Okay, and that might have been what it is because that's just confusing. It's very rare that I've I've seen that this season. That's why I pointed out. But uh, yeah, we also have to look back at uh, at Mr. Kevin Porter Jr., who I don't even want to talk about right now. It makes me upset. Still got to 35 minutes. Everybody was saying that. Oh, I don't know if he's going to get to 30 minutes. He got to 35 completely floored out against Milwaukee not the best of matchups but 7k no John Wall for the remainder of the season I gotta think that he's got uh better than two for uh what two for 12 from the field in him uh tomorrow what do you think about him and then we can move on yeah definitely gonna shoot better tomorrow I I think that makes for a great option uh Giving all things put together, I think just bouncing right back makes for a great option. Good. And if he doesn't play well, we can all blame, blame Rimpack. So that honestly is the best of both worlds. Makes it super, super easy. Poor guy's in the middle of finals and I'm just giving him flack. Whatever. Uh, you can deal with it. Kar- Karis Levert, 8,100 over on FanDuel. Top of the shooting guard position. Fred Van Vliet, 7,800 up against Denver. And then D'Angelo Russell, 6,900. So they actually inflated his price tag over there. He's been 6,300, it feels like, for a year and a half, which is cool. Uh, but 6,900 against Golden State, you can still definitely play D'Angelo. And let's throw Andrew Wiggins in. Uh, I'm not sure if revenge is the right word when you actually sunk the Minnesota franchise, but maybe revenge is the right word if it's up against Cat and such. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, 6,700. I'm sure he'll be pretty popular too. Talk to me about the top end of shooting guard. Yeah, over there in Fando, Van Vliet and Wiggins stand out to me. That's not a hot take whatsoever. Uh, just the way this thing is uh, panning out. Great pivots off of Levert. Really love Wiggins because he's playing a ton of minutes. And now in a great matchup versus Minnesota, I expect Wiggins to have a nice fantasy day uh, for us to take our chances on. Um, there's a ton of guys out for Detroit. I'm going to look to Josh Jackson, 5,600. P.J. Dozier makes for a great option uh, at 5K as well. Shout out to D'Angelo Russell. He's been uh, playing really good basketball for this Minnesota team. He's making them win games he's playing off the bench shooting a ton of times he's gone 17 16 18 that's his last three shot attempts in a game now matchup versus golden state at 6900 dollars. i think i'd be interested even though he's not playing high 30s even though in the mid 30s i think we can take our chances uh as long as there's no porzingis i'm gonna have interest in the secondary dallas guys tim hardaway jr only played 18 minutes granted they were winning uh more than by like 35 points against this golden state uh warriors team at one point in 18 minutes, he got 22 uh, fantasy points. I expect him to play more minutes as this game should maybe stay closer against Detroit. We'll see. Uh, but $4,200, Tim Hardaway Jr. has an upside. Over there on DraftKings at the shooting guard spot, up top, we got uh, Van Vliet, like we talked about. Wiggins is 7K. Uh, they are all make for nice pivots. And Drew Holiday, 7,700 in a Houston matchup. All are uh, great options. Uh along with Levert, even at 8K, a Brooklyn matchup that we love to target. I think that's a fine consideration. Drew Holiday and Middleton, I think uh, I'd still prefer Holiday, just more ball handling duty in a cake matchup versus Houston uh, off of Middleton. And keep in mind, Middleton could get hot in three quarters in a matchup where I think uh, Milwaukee should blow them out. Uh, if you want to spend down at the shooting guard spot, Jay Sean Tate just plays a ton of minutes. Uh at $6,100, I think uh, pivoting off to Josh Jackson, who's $5,800, is not the uh, is not the greatest amount of confidence in tournaments, but he has an upside. Uh, like you said, if New Orleans is going to play three st- straight games, uh, they went 26th. Today is the 28th, and then tomorrow's the 29th. Okay, so they didn't play on the 27th. Oh, that's right. Okay, 26. I, I missed yesterday. Yeah. So they're just on a back-to-back. Way mm-hmm. to go, math. My little brother's birthday's on the 26th. Then for whatever reason, I thought that was yesterday. 
Nope, that was definitely <laughs> the 27th. Uh, continue on. Yeah, and uh, Paco Campasso, he's still playing. He, he was up to mid thir- uh, mid 30s in minutes and putting up a great performance today as he up to 40 fantasy points. He's a great option. Even at $4,600, he's finding a way to be fantasy relevant now. Awesome. What what great timing for me. Oh, gosh. Yeah, today was just really, really ugly. 4600 for him. Over on DraftKings, sure, fire it up a little bit. You might hum a don't, but I'm going to hum a do. So I, I like going to him, 3800 uh, that was a really stupid joke, but it felt nice. It felt nice for me. Whatever. Uh, Landry Shamit, you can take some shots on. He played 33 minutes, 28, 30, 36, playing big minutes, basically, is what I'm saying. Bruce Brown is going to continue to be out there. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely in consideration. Man, there's just a lot of injuries and random people. Sterling Brown's out. Uh, you've got uh, like every shooting guard up and down uh, between Will Barton, Josh Hart has been out forever. Gary Trent's going to continue to be out. So yeah, PJ Dozier, 5K, take some shots there too. Eric Bledsoe, 4,800, the corpse of, put up uh, against the Clippers on Monday, uh, the 26th to be exactly correct. Uh, 36.8 fantasy points there, so take some shots on him too. Uh, that's all I got. You ready to move over to small forward? Let's do it. All right, Brandon Ingram on the top end. Well, I guess Luca on DraftKings top end there. He's small forward eligible. That's a good place to play him at. Brandon Ingram, 8,600. Uh, we'll see how he ends up fishing out tonight to see what his popularity will be, but probably not too high because you've got pivots around him. He's also very, very expensive on DK uh, as opposed to over on FanDuel, where he's generally been a little bit cheaper. Actually under 8K over there now, 7,900. Well done, FanDuel. Great job, great effort. Uh, and then you've got um, your boy, Michael Porter Jr. I, I like him too. I'll, I'll take ownership over him too. He's a he's a fellow little lad that we would like to cheer for. And then of course Chris Middleton, always sitting there, seventy six hundred. Just can never really play him because I don't really know what his ceiling is uh, at this point in time. I I haven't seen it in forever. But seventy six hundred, maybe we're getting to the range where you can take some uh, take some shots on it. But still feels too expensive. Talk to me about the top and a small forward. Yeah, top and a small forward. Looking over there on Fanduel. Kevin Durant, uh, up to mid-30s minutes, 33 minutes, uh, low 30s minutes. Matchup versus Indiana, sign me up. It's been a while where I've said uh, con- uh, rostering KD in confidence, and uh, I'm going to have a lot of KD tomorrow just because hey, it's fun to always have Kevin Durant in your fantasy lineups. He's he's a stud fantasy uh, basketball player when he's given the minutes. I, I love KD at that price tag. Michael Porter Jr., 8K. Uh, Hey, uh, I got some comments in YouTube chat saying ride MPJ to 10K. I will uh, be the conductor of that train. Uh, I did it with Zion. Uh, let's do it with MPJ up to 8K. Uh, Don't say Zion right now. I'm triggered. <laughs> Why should he probably be, should he be min price now? The way he's playing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, Michael Porter Jr. might be the better second year player than Zion. If there was a sophomore Stop year. Stop it. Stop it. Please talk. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go but uh, I, I think um, all, uh, I think some pivots off of uh, uh, Mike, Michael Porter's hot uh, hot streak are guys like Brandon Ingram, uh, Chris Middleton, uh, just because Porter's been playing a ton of minutes and playing really efficiently. Do I think it's sustainable? Probably not, but he's pr- uh, just balling out, man. I, I It's been really impressive to see how he's doing this of late. It's been great to watch his growth as a basketball player. I think other guys in the small forward spot, if you uh, OG and Anobi stands out, uh, guys are going to play a ton of minutes for Toronto in a matchup versus Denver. I think Kent Basemore is all set to return tomorrow. Uh, so I think uh, he should be uh, someone we can spend down at uh, $3,900 on drafting. So that's a uh, option to consider. Uh, while other guys in the small forward spot, I think Sadiq Bay is always has tournament upside because of how volatile of a player he is. Price at fifty one hundred dollars on FanDuel, I believe forty nine hundred dollars on DraftKings, and other guys at the small forward spot, I think I would shy away from are guys like I think Luke Dort had his uh, little a two week surge. I think that's a little, he's priced a little too expensive for me now, but it's really about it at the small forward spot. So Indiana got completely blown out of the water. I don't want to do it. I don't want to click his name, but I think I'm probably going to have to do it over on DK. That's Edmund Sumner at 4,400 against Brooklyn. Maybe, you know, we just saw 32.25, 33.75 uh, in mid-30s minutes. He only played 20, but Portland was up 
pretty pretty comfortably uh, halfway through that third quarter. I think we can go back to the well and try out some shots there. But as you said, Kent Bazemore, 3,900. I think he'll be super popular. You have Hamadou Diallo, 3,600. Small forward per usual, a good spot to be getting your value from. That's kind of what it looks like to me. Anybody else for you? I think uh, I think that's about all I got, too. Also, make sure you're very price sensitive because Kent Bazemore is 5,300 over on FanDuel. And then going down there a little bit further, uh, going up, sorry, O'Shea Brissett is 6,800 at small forward. Probably don't need to be going that direction, but I guess if he just continues to put up 50 and is the great Canadian hope of basketball, such as life, you could probably keep playing him and, and riding that. It's crazy to think he's only $1,000 less than Anthony Edwards and uh, 1100 less than Brandon Ingram. Almost at Chris Middleton price range. Way to go, O'Shea Brissett. Uh, you ready to move along? Let's do it. Top end of power forward, Giannis Antetokounmpo, 11,200. Uh, he's got that GTD next to his name, but he is probable, as I am pretty sure you already know if you're listening to this. Zion Williamson, 9,400 going up against OKC. <sighs> I mean, he legitimately has 24 fantasy points in a close game against Denver with like a minute left. I I don't even know what to say about this right now. I'm distraught. And then Pascal Siakam, 8,700 up against Denver. I mean, why couldn't Zion be over 10K like he was previously? I, I wouldn't have to worry about this, but oh, I've got way too much today. Uh, Christian Wood, 8,400, though. I think he'll continue to be the chalk of the position and probably should be. Uh, back-to-back 37-minute performances, averaging 50 in his last two uh, on FanDuel. Definitely a good spot to be. Uh, talk to me about the top end of power forward. Yeah, shout-out to Lonzo Ball for putting up a 67-point fantasy outburst. Uh, what a performance by him. Put up triple-double. Uh, really uh, paying off. Not uh, doing well right now, Rinpak. Continue. Talk about the power forward position. <laughs> he took. He stole the show from Zion. I'm sorry. But I think after Zion burning everyone today, I think we go right back to uh, the nature of DFS. Matchup versus OKC. No one's going to slow him down. I'll take my chances with Zion. If you want to pivot off of Zion, uh, paying up for Giannis in the matchup versus Houston, he could get there in a quarter. I kid. He could probably get there in two quarters. It wouldn't shock me. This Houston team is absolutely god awful. Other guys, at the power forward spot. Uh, uh, Isaiah Stewart is definitely in is definitely in play as I think he's going to play around thirty minutes with no Plumley. Uh, I like taking my chances. Fifty nine hundred is an appropriate price tag. It's not too cheap, and neither is it too expensive. I think it's just right for a matchup versus Dallas. Um, other guys at the power forward spot. Pokacheski is all the way down to forty four hundred. You can take some chances there. Draymond Green uh, always has huge upside and great matchup. So uh, Draymond Green over there on FanDuel is fine. Even on DraftKings is fine just because of the triple-double bonus. 73, 7,400 on DraftKings and FanDuel respectively. Sekou Dumboya got coach speak saying uh, Dwayne Casey wants him to play more, but he's not that productive a fantasy player. I just mentioned him because he's the min 3K on DraftKings. Kevin Durant, power forward eligible, 8,500. That is a great price tag for him against Indiana. Going to be very excited to roster that. If you want to pivot to Siakam, I can't blame you to, uh, based on ownership. Other guys around that price range. Hmm. Zion was just under 10K over there on DraftKings. I'll have interest for sure. And Aaron Gordon's going to have a good fantasy game at some point, I hope. Uh, at some point, I say that because, man, he was terrible today too. Like only played 29 minutes. And put up 16 and three quarters fantasy points against a favorable uh, Pelicans matchup. So go figure with Aaron Gordon. He has lost all his fantasy goodness coming over to Denver. Denver's winning though, right? Isn't that mm-hmm. that's that's the thing? All right, 5300 O'Shea. Brissett. They're winning because of Michael Porter Jr. That's why they're winning, and that's not Jokic. True. Yeah, not Jokic. Jokic sucks. O'Shea Brissett, 5300 up against Brooklyn on DraftKings. Definitely, uh, definitely love that. I think if you're going to take some shots, I know it's pretty awful. I know it doesn't ever look good, but you can try to figure out this Jaden McDaniels thing. He's still underneath 4K on both sides. I believe he's 3900 on DraftKings and FanDuel. I would, I'd be all right. He's been playing traditionally low 30s minutes uh, up against Houston last time out. Only played 25. That was not great to see. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt actually had some extended run, but uh, that was a pretty comfortable game. Uh, going up against Golden State, probably going to see those minutes go up. I have to ask, because he's been popular pretty much every single slate because Goga's been out. What are you going to do in the event that uh, you get Goga out once more? How much Jakar Sampson interest do you have at 3,900 on DraftKings and 3,800 on FanDuel now? 
I have some uh, significant interest in Jakar Samson just because of those minutes. It's a small enough slate where you, he could spike an upside where he might find his way to the top. I know you'd like him to stay out of foul trouble, but he can't keep his hands to himself after that suspension off of headbutting Patty Mills. But if he plays 30 minutes, he could get you 20, mid 20 fantasy points, and you'll take that at that price tag. So that's the Jakar Samson feeling at this moment. It hasn't been fun for the last two games, but. They're out of bodies, and they're going to need Jakar to play and show up. I haven't played him. It's weird. I, I've just kind of been playing O'Shea, and I think maybe I've kind of luck boxed with the foul trouble that you spoke of, but I have no idea. I, he's just not an appealing dude, but I think on this slate, if if people aren't going to play him, if he's not going to be 50% owned, he's been the last couple. I think if he stays out of foul trouble and it put up 35 point fantasy games we'd be in that mid fours and then we'd have a different conversation but he's under 4k on both sites so i think i'll have a little bit tomorrow more than likely uh moving our way over to center to round out the evening nikola Jokic, he's very good at basketball i was kidding before 10,900 against toronto carl anthony towns up against golden state 10,100 Good luck, Kevon Looney. Good luck, Draymond Green. Enjoy. Zion Williamson, 9,800. Trigger word on DraftKings. Uh, Christoph Porzingis, we didn't even bring him up. He's questionable. Uh, I don't know what kind of minutes he'd be stepping into. Uh, he's power forward and center eligible over on DraftKings, but that's probably going to be a pass at 8,700. But Christian Wood, 8,200 over there too. Uh, talk to me about the top end of center. Yeah, top end of center, obviously, led the way by MVP of this season, Nikola Jokic, tough not to love him yet again, keeps rolling out the minutes. Denver's riding his back uh, at 10, nine on both sides. He coming off a great game yet again, played 36 minutes. And he's, I expect him to play something around that against Toronto. I expect him to rack up around 60 fantasy points and you're going to love it. Uh, just because of when Jokic is on the slate, it's just like, you're going to have to have some interest at, at the minimum. Like It's tough to like not love Jokic whenever he's out there just because of the way the offense is going through him and how well he is fantasy-wise. Now, if you want to fade him and play a guy like Cat in a matchup versus Golden State, I'm all about it. I, I've been rostering Cat quite a bit. It's not been as fun uh, over the past six, seven games or so, but Cat uh, has a serious upside. We know that he's one of those centers who has uh, potentially be the highest-scoring player in the slate, uh, in the matchup versus Golden State, I think Kevon Looney is not slowing him down. Stephen Adams did not return today, so Hernan Gomez has a great chance to start and pay off that salary. I uh, they I believe played him down uh, in the second half quite a bit. He got up to twenty three minutes, and I think going to Hernan Gomez at forty nine hundred makes uh, quite a bit of sense. I think he'll be quite popular as well. In a matchup versus uh, Minnesota, Kevon Looney expect to play more minutes. I, I think he'll play around 25 minutes. Um, uh, it wouldn't be the craziest value play on the slate of this size, uh, but you would need him to like pick up a backdoor 10 and 10 double double. Now, Ken Birch uh, got some Kyle Lowry coach speak. Hey, we're trying to get him paid, and he's put up mid 30s fantasy points since then. So, are you buying into Kyle Lowry trying to get Ken Birch paid? If so, you should definitely roster him at that price tag. But it's really led by Jokic and Kat on both uh, both sides. So definitely have a ton of interest. And hopefully we have enough value where we can play them both on DraftKings. And if Goga plays, he will probably be the priority of center over on DraftKings at 4K, 4,900 in play again on FanDuel. I don't know why, even though he hasn't played, I don't know why these algorithms don't at least increase him because, you know, he would have been 50% owned on any of those slates that he played on. Uh, you know, you're going to project him for around 30 with no Turner, no Sabonis. So uh, just throwing it out there that that's definitely ridiculous. But uh, that's the slate that we have been given over on DraftKings to get 4K there. At least 4,900, uh, you do have these ceilings and you can only play one center. So uh, going to Jokic in town seems like a pretty good way to handle it. Kelly Olenek up to 8,100 on FanDuel. That's just fun to look at. Uh, not really seriously considered, but uh, got his power forward eligibility back over on DraftKings. 6,900. Definitely like targeting that. That's about all we got for today. Uh, I guess uh, also we we have Plumlee out, but Isaiah Stewart is up to uh, 6K over on DraftKings. That's not going to be as appealing. You're probably not going to be getting that. Uh, but at 5,900 uh, where you play two power forwards on FanDuel, maybe some shots, but uh, at least good job pricing him. Uh, talk to me about anybody else. Is that all we got for today, buddy? That's the last uh, bit we have for today. It's going to be an interesting uh, six-game slate. I know we're going 10-6, 10-6. It just feels like the back and forth. 
this week. But uh, and also there is the craziest amount of news to look forward to. I know there's an Adonchich Porzingis questionable, but and Goga, but that's really about it. There's Dallas, the Dallas Qs have been like they've been like more probable than questionable, in my opinion, <laughs> of late. But outside of Porzingis, but yeah, Porzingis that there is no and I and now there's obviously we're coming to 10 games, so there's gonna be teams on a back to back, like guys. Uh, we already got Detroit news, so we can target Detroit, Detroit being a priority. Um, but we'll see what got teams like New Orleans, Denver on a back to back, what they do. Uh, but uh, we'll see what ends up happening. It's a six game slate, so uh, it's it's gonna be fun, uh, as is every day, but it's a weird six game slate. Yeah, two games at seven, two games at eight, two games at nine. Pretty clean slate, it looks like. Uh, I'll be on live before lock. You could find out if it's a clean slate then, uh, because we'll be doing the jack market for half an hour afterwards, and I'm hoping I don't have to tilt my face off, although it does make for pretty good TV. For Rinpak, I'm Eric. We'll catch you guys on Friday. Mm-hmm.